Hello there, I'm Alan Grovors, Technical Sales Manager here at Johnson Matthey. Um, we've just released out into the, into the world that we are 3D printing ceramics. Now, we're getting a lot of questions about all aspects of 3D printing. So I'm here with Dr. Sam Thomas, our research group leader, who's hopefully going to answer some of the questions uh, that you've had. Right, Sam. So the first question that we always get asked is, what materials can we print? Fair enough. Um, we print with ceramic oxides, predominantly with alumina, um, which is our core product, but we can develop other ceramic materials which may have higher wear or higher thermal stability. Okay, so we can really tailor the material to what the customer actually needs. Absolutely. Um, what about shape? What can we do with uh, ceramic 3D printing? When you're 3D printing, you're just limited by your imagination. Anything you can think of, pretty much, we can print. Um, we print generally quite small shapes, kind of these sorts of sizes. Um, and we have a print bed which is over a metre in length, our largest print bed. So we print tens of thousands of different shapes in one bed. Right, so, so what we're saying here is that we can actually design the shapes for the customer mm -hmm. that can give efficiencies that cannot be created by conventional Absolutely. manufacturing yeah. techniques. Cool, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, what about the speed of production? Okay, yeah, so when you compare this manufacturing method to conventional manufacturing techniques, we are much faster. For me, going from a design phase to a finished product, including the pre-processing, printing, and post-processing, takes about two weeks. Right. Um, if you were to do that with conventional manufacturing and you needed to design a new die and press, that would take about six weeks to make. Of course, that's a saving of about four weeks, four weeks there. Yeah, yeah. And what about scale? I mean, what sort of scale can we do this on? So we started off with an R&D scale, which we still have, and we use that to do our materials development. So we have a small printer, which is very versatile, which we use to develop new material formulations. Then we move on to our prototyping printer, which is where we optimise shape designs, and we can go through various iterations on that. When we're happy with both material and shape, we move on to our pilot plant, which is a newly commissioned facility in Royston. That can produce tonnes of material per year. Well, so we can go from an R&D scale where we're playing with the shape and, and getting the right formulation, right up to supplying customer with tons of this material. Yeah. That's amazing. Now, I hear a lot about ceramic 3D printing not being particularly strong. I hear the same thing all the time. Um, I try to prove it to everyone, but the only real way is just to try and break one. So pick your shape and do your best. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pick this one here. I'm going to try really hard to to break it. Oh, no. I'm struggling, I have to say, this is extremely, extremely strong. All I'm getting is uh, imprints of the shape in my in my hand here. Yeah, can't beat it. No, I can't break that. Okay, Sam, well, thank you very much for answering those questions for us. Uh, if, if anybody out there has any more questions that haven't already been answered, please uh, contact us and uh, we'll do the best to answer them.